the firm companies associated with Microsoft and do some research based on that. Uh, and he still argues with them basically over the validity of the data and the methods and what they actually measure and, and so on and so forth. And why does it matter? Well, uh, as, as you probably know, the GPL v3 uh, is supposed to address some of the issues we have with software patents. Uh, and the GPL in general uses a copyleft uh, type license. Uh, which means that you are supposed to uh, produce code which you then give back to the community in general. Uh, and you cannot actually turn it into proprietary code and distribute this as, as proprietary code, uh, which you wouldn't be able to do with Apache. Um, if we have copyleft code everywhere, it means that people will be encouraged to share uh, lots of programs and to actually collaborate a bit more. That's the one of the goals that we, that you know, that, that we personally kind of promote so uh, you know people give people people to actually share their code and not trying to use uh, not try to use patents as ways of excluding and ways of competing with other companies saying well uh, we have a patent on this thing and that thing uh, therefore you know we are the only ones who can sell this bit of release so based on GPL code GPL license code uh, so, so yes, so the GPL is really, really important. I think it's still being used in about 60% of the projects that are considered to be open source of free software. And we do have to try and defend the, uh, the uh, choice of the GPL, uh, almost a default choice for many developers when they produce new software. We have to try and defend that to ensure that companies are not able to use the software we develop against us. Well, what I'll, I think we'll do first, because I've, I've got a few little tidbits of info, but I think I can wait till after the um, the first track of the day. And Roy, I hope you don't mind, but uh, it'll be my selection first. And this particular track that I've chosen for today, I'm afraid for everybody who's not a heavy metal fan, uh, you're going to be very disappointed, because this is uh, this is one of my favourite genres, and it's um, from the album Century of Blood by Dark Confessions. And this track's called Caught in Your Freedom.
Right, if your eardrums aren't bleeding and you're back with us, we'll uh, continue on with the show. Um, Roy, I've got a very quick piece of uh, news here, which came from the Torrent Freak Bits site, which is just the, the smaller this part of the site that deals with a smaller piece of news. It's quite interesting, um, and it mentions Richard Stallman. It's quite rare that you see a, a mainstream site which mainly deals with the uh, discussing torrents and, in general, it's to, towards more sort of uh, copyright uh, aspect. But uh, so to see Richard Stallman mentioned on Torrent Free, where people are mostly talking about latest movies or you know, who's been sued or whatever, it's quite interesting to see that they've uh, mentioned him. And he's made a comment recently, allegedly, that um, the public should disobey Spain's new anti-piracy law, which, to be fair... I don't know a lot about at the moment, but I'm assuming it's going to be um, it's it's going to be very similar to a three strikes type ruling. Um, I don't know if you had any knowledge or comment on that uh, particular subject. Well, the first thing I was going to say though is you're not quite correct to suggest that the sites about copyrights don't mention Stallman because in recent years, especially, uh, he's been campaigning a lot of the issues to do with copyrights, uh, and he has lots of reasons to do that. And of course the GPL, which is basically one of his main uh, uh, contributions to the free software community and to the software community in general, uh, is based on uh, turning copy copyright against itself in a way, or trying to use the copy copyright licensing and the whole uh, legal basis of copyrights against itself. So you actually have to share uh, your code. Uh, and, and, and actually, if you look at some of the recent uh, talks he's been given in multiple languages, which I think he can speak at least three. Uh, it's a lot to do with copyrights. Uh, he talks about how it affects society. And, um, I don't think he did this. Maybe. No, so I think I think misunderstood. I'm talking in relation to Torrent Freak, the website itself, where I'm quoting this article from. In general, I've been reading the site for quite a few years, and in general, the readers that comment on the site um, to the articles and the articles themselves generally focus around things like mainstream movies, maybe it's speculative invoicing, but it's all got a theme of mainstream movies. It was yeah. to see actually the name Richard Stallman mentioned on Torrent Freak, um, even though it was only in the Torrent Freak bits part of, of the site, was was quite surprising. Um, not not surprising much, but quite unusual, because I think the audience that that particular site attracts isn't so much the free software um, and Linux and open source users. It's more, it's more to do with people who are interested in the latest issues concerning Hollywood, um, the music industry, uh, the actions that they're using to tackle um, what they regard as unlawful file sharing. Um, and that's what surprised me. That's why, obviously, I brought it up. Um, it well, mentions... I, I, Sorry. I don't really know the law too well. One thing I do know uh, is that in Spain, they did try to convict some people for so-called you know, piracy. Uh, of course, Solomon has a very nice response to it. You basically say, well... I don't attack boats, or, you know, they compare it to people who attack boats or attack ships, is, is you know, the words he typically uses in his talks. And, uh, so, so there, they kind of call it piracy, and they call it this and that. And Spain wasn't quite buying into the whole kind of universal agenda of trying to crack down on so-called pirates. Uh, and what they had to do in Hollywood was to change the law in Spain or to reverse the rulings in some ways. Not exactly to reverse the rulings, but to have another go at the same cases and, and then win against the consumers to kind of reinforce their uh, assumption, their laws that they assume are kind of some, you know, God-given rights, you know, if, if people do this and this with our movies, they have to be handled like this, because we say so. Uh, Spain wasn't quite caving in. Uh, Spain also doesn't mm -hmm. cave into the EU patent, which is another subject uh, we, we could speak about. But the what we also found out quite important with, with WikiLeaks around January, I think, or maybe even in, in uh, December, lots of documents were leaked which show the pressure um, imposed by the U.S. government on behalf of Hollywood on Spain. 